Shalom and blessings to you. I'm Reverend Clifton McDowell Sr. I'm the pastor of the Church of God of East New York, located in the heart of Brooklyn, the East New York section of Brooklyn. We're so glad that you chose to tune in to our channel for this message. We believe that God has a word for you. We hope that you will subscribe to our channel and like us. Now let's go in and hear a great message. God, we trust that you will be with us now in the Word. Pray, God, that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart will be acceptable to you. For you, O oh Lord, are my strength, my redeemer, my king, my Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you would just have your own divine way. Holy Spirit, take this vessel, use it for your purposes. My lips, my mind, take it all. For your glory and honor, I pray, as you advance your kingdom and your purposes in the earth, our hearts say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. For certainly they endure forever. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness unto each of us. Amen. What a wonderful time of worship. Remind us who our Lord is. Remind us that he's worthy of our total praise. Amen. Hope you have your Bibles. I'm a very familiar portion of scripture we're going to use this morning. But today, today I want to start a new sermon series that I hope, amen, that I hope and that I trust will encourage you, challenge you, and inspire you especially in this season that we find ourselves in, that it will encourage, challenge, and inspire you as individuals, as families, as a community, and as congregations. This may not be, to some, this may not be a deep or profound message, but here's what I want to tell you through this series. Here's what I want you to gain through this series. I'll tell you right up front. I want you to stay full. I want you to stay full. Life is going to happen, but you stay full. The enemy is going to attack you through lies and deception. Stay full. Disappointments will come. Stay full. Sickness may even come, but you stay full. This whole series will be about staying full. Today, I simply want to tell you to stay hopeful and overflowing. Stay hopeful and overflowing. Our foundational text is found in Romans chapter 15. Romans 15, verse 13. And it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul's prayer for the church there in Rome is that they would not just be hopeful or full of hope, but that they would overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God who both inspires and imparts hope. Paul wanted them to see God as the God of hope who could fill them with joy and peace as they trusted in him, which would result in overflowing hopefulness. Oh yes, you know what we tell you, trust him, that's right, obey him and what? And watch him work. It would be by the power of the Holy Spirit that they would stay hopeful and overflowing. This, is, this hope is not um, a, a wishful thinking kind of hope, but it is a confident expectation in the God of hope. 
that joy and peace uh, would, would fill them, is Paul's prayer. The joy and peace of God would fill them as they trusted the God of hope and that the result would be a hope that would overflow. The hope we have does not operate apart from trusting God. It does not operate, amen, independently of our trust for God. You see, the depth of our hope is directly related to the strength of our trust. Sometimes it seems, it just seems like bad news is everywhere. Sometimes it feels like, okay, what's next? When, when is the next shoe going to drop? How in the world can we be full of hope in the face of situations that are all around us that feel and look so hopeless? How, how can we have hope in view of what's going on in Washington right now? How can we have hope in view of what's going on in the economy where you and I live because listen, people that look like you and look like me, as much as the stock market seems to be going up, it's not your stock market. How can we have hope in view of what's going on in our families and in view of what's going on in our marriages. How can we have an overflowing hope in view of what's going on in our communities, in our cities, in our streets? How can we have hope given this ongoing pandemic, given the realities of structural and systemic racism, racism in our nation? How can we have hope we look at the health and the educational systems that are in our communities. How can we have hope? When the first things that get cut in our communities are the very things that will help our children to stay focused, help them to succeed, they cut it out. But when you go into other communities, those things are just Loaded on them, music appreciation, um, ex extracurricular activities, those are the first things to be cut. And they wonder why our children can have so, such a challenging experience. How in the world can we have hope in view of all these things, what is the basis of our hope? Where does our hope come from? As believers, how in the world can you justify, in view of all the things that are going on, how do you justify having an overflowing hope? I want to challenge you. Stay hopeful to the point of overflow. Think about what it means to overflow. Think about what it means uh, unless a vessel or a container is first full in its content, there is no hope that there can be an overflow. It must first be full in order to have an overflow. Yes, it can be spilt. Yes, Somebody can knock it over, turn it over. Yes, the vessel can develop a leak. The content can evaporate. They can sour. They can spoil. They can become stagnant. They can develop an offensive smell. To overflow means that the content must flow over the brim of its receptacle, down the sides of the vessel. Overflow is an excess or surplus not able to be accommodated by the available space. Full to overflowing, bursting, spilling, running over, flood, surplus, excess, overabundance. Paul's prayer. And the prayer today that we have for you is that we want your hope to be so full that it overflows 
your life into your thoughts, overflows into your words, overflows into your actions, overflows into your attitudes, it overflows into your expectations. The opposite of overflow would be need, undersupply, scarcity, deficit, insufficiency, trickle, discouragement, dehydrate, lack, dry, want, drought, dearth, dribble, hold, drip, deficiency. Paul's prayer for the church there in Rome is not that they have a dribble or a trickle of hope. It's not that they have a de dehydrated or dry or deficient hope. His prayer for them is that they would have an overflowing hope. To overflow is to go beyond filling something with a liquid to the point that it gushes over the edges. During heavy rainstorms, rivers, overflow their banks, and when the river overflows its banks, it floods the surrounding land. And the strength of our hope that is rooted in the faithfulness of God. God is saying, listen, Paul's prayer to our God is that we would still have a hope that's full and overflowing. Being hopeful and overflowing is not denying the realities. It's not denying what's going on in our world. It's not sticking our head in the sand and saying it ain't so. No, it does not deny the realities that are all around us in our world. It's, a, it's, a, it's having a strength of trust that says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the wondrous works of the Lord. It is not a denial, but an acknowledgement that God is God. And I trust him. Yes, our hope will take some hits. Might even get weakened. But we can re-energize our hope on so many different levels. Amen. We, we can re-energize it on what God has already said. Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power. That is that work within us. Jeremiah 29.11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Here it is, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. We can re-energize, amen, our hope when it takes a hit, when it feels like it's weak. With Romans 8, 28, the Lord says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who, what, who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We can re-energize our hope, amen, on scripture, the word, Philippians 1, 6, that tells us being confident of this. We talked about this last week. He who have begun a good work in you carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. We can have, we can remain hopeful and overflowing even after taking hits to our hope, even after going through weakened, amen, season in our hope. You know the difference between a rowboat and a speedboat? A, a rowboat requires human effort. A speedboat has another source of power. A rowboat, amen, represents my determination and your determination, your self-effort and my self-effort to accomplish something to get where we're going. But a speedboat represents the Christian who is dependent on the Holy Spirit to get them to their destination, to fulfill the purposes of God. 
Amen. You can re-energize your hope to full and overflowing. Amen. As you hear what God is saying to you, when God is saying, I'm with you and I'm for you. We can re-energize our hope from our own testimonies. I know sometimes we want to let other folk hear our testimonies, but I believe that every now and then you need to re-energize your hope by listening to your own testimony, by getting in the room and talking to yourself. Go ahead and testify to yourself about the goodnesses of God. Remind yourself what the Lord has done for you. Remind yourself, amen, about the goodness of the Lord and where he brought you from. Go back and look at your journals. Go back and look at your notes in your Bible and see what the Lord has done for you and re-energize your hope. We can re-energize our hope from the testimonies of others. Read, read, read. Listen, leaders are readers. And with the technology we have, leaders can be listeners. You can get an audio book and you can listen and or you can read or you can do like I do. I read and listen at the same time. Get biographies of great men and women of God. Amen. And let your hope be re-energized. People like Corey Ten Boone or George Muller or Joni Erickson Tata or Dawson Trotman, Martin Luther King. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, David Wilkerson, Ralph Abernathy, Richard Allen, Miriam Anderson, Augustine, Benjamin Banneker, James Varick, James Massey, John Lewis. Read biographies and see won't it re-energize your hope. Call up a brother. Call up a sister. And say, listen, I just need a testimony. I just need you to tell me something about the goodness of the Lord in your life. Or recall, amen, a testimony of people within the congregation, in your small group. Rehearse it in your mind and remind yourself that God is God. He's the God of hope. We can re-energize our hope when we return to home base. You see, the body of Christ, the church is home base. We are the, um, em the embassy of heaven right where we are. Where you are, heaven, a little bit of heaven is. Amen. The kingdom of God is reigning right now. It is reigning within. And where you are, where the, the rule and the reign of Christ is, that's where the kingdom of God exists. Stay connected. That's home base. Stay connected. Stay engaged and involved in the life of your church community. Even during this pandemic, the church is still alive. It is still active even if the building is closed. You can re-energize your hope if you stay connected and you're returned to home base. We can re-energize our hope when we shift our focus. Sometimes, we be I believe, sometimes we lose hope because of our focus. But I heard the, the worship team talk about lifting our eyes to the hills. That's what David said, amen. And he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence my help cometh. I'm going to look to the one who's sending me help. He sent me help in the past. He's sending me help right now. And I can be assured he's going to send me help tomorrow. I'm going to look to the Lord who made heaven and earth. The one who neither slumbers nor sleeps. The one who preserves me day and night. The one who preserves my going out and my coming in. Sometime I just need to shift my focus. Heard somebody said, stop telling God about your big problems and start telling your problems about your big God. It's a shift of focus. Start 
telling, talking to the one who can help you rather than the one who can't. Shift your focus. What would happen if you began to see your problem as an opportunity? How, how would that change your mindset? If you recognized what God said in his word, that he would not suffer you to be tempted, tested, or tried above what you are able, but would, with that temptation, that test, that trial, also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it, that you might be able to stand up underneath it. How would that change your mindset, shift your focus from talking, from taking things into your own hands to waiting on the Lord? Mm -hmm. Shift your focus. Wait for directions. Wait for the Lord to act, to deliver, to answer your prayer, to renew your strength, to do what only God can do. Hope can be re-energized when we learn how to wait on the Lord. Amen. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard and delivered him. We can live without food for about three weeks. You know, that probably scares some of you. Especially when you've been in this pandemic and, and you have just, you've become a couch potato. Scares you to think, not eating. But I need to tell you, you're going to come out one day and we want folks to recognize you. Let me leave that alone. <laughs> Science says that we can live without food for about three weeks. We can live without water, any, any um, hydration for about three days. And we can live without oxygen, without air for about three minutes. But how long can we last without hope? How long can we last without hope? I would submit not long, not long. That's why, that's why the enemy wants to attack you at the point of your hope. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. The book entitled, the book entitled Unshakable Hope by Max Lucado. He exhorts believers to build your lives on the great precious promises of God. Have an unshakable hope. In the book, he lists several reasons why we can have an unshakable hope as followers of Christ. He says we have God's great and precious promises, so have an unshakable hope. He says, you, you know that God has stamped his image on you, so have an unshakable hope. You know that the devil's days are limited, so have an unshakable hope. We know that not only are we heirs of God, but we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Have an unshakable hope. We know that our prayers have power. Amen. Because he's told us in John 16, 24, hitherto up to now you've asked nothing in my name but ask and you shall receive. Why? So that your joy may be full. It's not us that has the power. It's Jesus that has the power. He says, have an unshakable hope knowing that there is grace available for the humble. Have an unshakable faith knowing that God gets you. Well, that's not that amazing. With all of your quirks, with all of your, you know, God gets you. He really does. He understands you. Everybody else don't understand you. Some folk in your home don't understand you. Listen, listen. Sometimes you don't understand you. But God gets you. You can have an unshakable hope. 
have an unshakable hope knowing that Christ right now as a believer, Christ is praying for you. You have the advocate within you in the Holy Ghost. You have the advocate in glory in Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for you. You have the Holy Spirit praying on your behalf when you can't even put your words together. Have an unshakable hope knowing that in Christ. We are no longer under condemnation. Have an unshakable hope knowing that the tomb or the grave is temporary. He says we can have an unshakable hope knowing that joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We can have an unshakable hope in spite of what all the stuff that's going on in the world, in spite of the structural and systemic racism, in spite of injustice. We can have an unshakable hope knowing that justice will prevail. I'm standing on the promises of God. How about you? Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God, I shall prevail. Why? I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the spirit sword, standing on the promises of God. Oh, I'm standing. Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Oh, we can have an unshakable hope. We can be, remain hopeful and overflowing as we stand on the promises of God. Yes. Yes, life happens. Storms come into all of our lives. Along with not just days of disappointment, but seasons of disappointment. But as believers, we can stay hope, full of hope. And life seems to even get the best of us. Our hope has a basis for which to be re-energized. Our hope has a basis for being full and overflowing. Listen, there might come a time. There might come a time when you need some help. By somebody trained professionally to help you to find your way back from hopelessness to hopeful to overflowing with hope. You might need somebody to come alongside of you who has been specifically trained and equipped and positioned to help you through. Please hear me. Don't let don't let Foolish spiritual pride or miseducation cause you to stay where you are when hope is available. There might be someone listening to my voice right now. Maybe you're listening to this live stream. Maybe you're listening to, it, to this recording. You might be right now feeling so discouraged, so despondent, so hopeless. But you're having thoughts of taking your life. I want to say emphatically, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your life is too precious. The enemy of your soul is a liar, is a liar. He is the father of lies. He is a deceiver. It's not as bad as he wants you to think it is. Jesus has made provisions for you that you might have a life filled with purpose and meaning in him. And I know, I know, life can really look hopeless at times. But I want to tell you that there's a way back to hope. I believe, 
that you were on the mind of Christ when he said this in Matthew 11. Come to me, he says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I believe he had you on his mind when he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, don't check out on life. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus, and I want to tell you, he will hear you. He's listening for your cry. Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For It is with the heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. He says, as Scripture says, anyone who believes in him, and I'm going to tell you something, you and I qualify for anyone. Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there's no difference between Jew and Gentile, amen, rich and poor. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all, here it is, who will call on him. I'm trying to help you to call on him this morning. For he says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God wants you to be hopeful and overflowing. I want to pray for you right now. And then I want you to call a number. If you're, you're, you're having a crisis of life and you're at, you're at a road, of, a point of indecision, I want to pray for you, amen, and I want you to call a number that's going to be put on the screen. Why? Because you're worth it. Father, you know why this message was proclaimed today. You know why this word has come forth. You know who needed to hear this message. You said, you said in your word, whoever calls on me will be saved. You said. And I'm asking you to save someone right now. Pull somebody from the brink of disaster. Pull somebody, amen, from the clutches of death, hell, and the grave. Forgive them. Forgive them, Father. Draw them to you by the loving power of the Holy Spirit. Receive them and enfold them into your loving embrace. I ask you, oh God, give them a hope and a future in Christ. And take them on a journey to not simply hope, but hope full and overflowing. Father, I ask this in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. I want you to write this number down and I want you to call it because you're worth it. Because provision has been made. You're worth it. God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting love. His love endures through all generations. He says, listen, heaven and earth will pass away before any one little tittle, one little jot of his word be would become untrue. Stay hopeful and overflowing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. I hope that you have heard the voice of God speaking to you through his word. Stay hopeful and overflow even through this difficult season of our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that message, and I hope that you will like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to experience a live service, be with us at this same channel next week on Sunday at 10.30 a.m.
Until next time, God bless you.